Hi, all. I'm Sarah Hudspeth. Um, I'm a solutions architect at Chronosphere, and I'm very excited to talk to you today about Prometheus queries that measure CPU and memory. And as I mentioned before, this will require your participation, so have your phone out or computer out, because you will vote on queries that you think uh, best measure CPU and me uh, memory. Here's a quick agenda. I'm going to just go into intro how I got up here and why I wanted to talk about CPU and memory queries. Um, and then we'll dig into the what, why, where, when of why there are so many CPU and memory queries out there. And then you will get to vote. So uh, please participate. There, um, the thing I'm using, you can ask questions. So please uh, feel free to share your own experience with uh, CPU and memory. Uh, Queries. So um, I'm a solutions architect, and this past year I've done a ton of migration work to PromQL and open, open source telemetry platforms, hotel collectors, all of that. I put myself as the little geese in the back, or the little goose in the back, uh, just because migrations take a lot of people, a lot of effort. Um, you're a part of a big movement. Um, and uh, some of the major query translations I've been doing have been SignalFlow, SignalFX, Wavefront, Docs.sd, and Urkel. And I just came across so many queries that all are supposed to measure the same thing. I just was wondering, why isn't there one query to rule them all? Um, so to, to get into why the, there isn't one uh, query to rule them all, just a note about how hard migrations are. Change is hard. Um, going through multiple migrations, knowing um, what's at risk, right, is that there's this impetus, or if I at least had this impetus to get it right, just because, you know, I, I like this comic uh, a lot. It kind of explains, like, what happens if things fall over, and if you don't have failovers, and if you don't get the data right, or if, if your customer the migration effort doesn't go as well, um, there's a lot on the line. So it was really important to me to figure out what data was being used correctly or incorrectly. As you might see, there might be some queries coming. Um, as I was preparing my talk, I wanted to make a joke about where do que queries come from, mommy? But there wasn't one, so I asked AI to generate one and thought it was pretty funny when a database and a coder love each other very much. You get sometimes it does feel like that's where prompt queries come from. But the real queries we're going to look at uh, came from three main sources. So either these were direct customer translations. We had a um, translation tool that got the queries mostly there, but we still were checking a lot of them and checking their work, making sure the data or the what queries they were using before still translated to prom. Um, we also, you're going to see a ton of our internal dashboards and monitors. So what we use at Chronosphere to monitor ourselves or provide out of the box experiences. And then of course, there is what is on the internet. Um, so we're going to look at some canonical open source Grafana dashboards, um, C advisor, node exporter queries, and you'll get to see why, why, why I'm up here. So here are a few of the customer translation queries. So these were from SignalFX or Wavefront. Um, you might notice, right? These are all CPU utilage labeled queries. Um, you might see that we're using a lot of containers, CPUs usage seconds, we have some cube pod metrics, we have cube node status allocatable. Um, number three is really interesting. It, it's a pod count of where CPU usage is being used, the, the average usage is something. Um, we also have uh, just regular rates, core usage per second, um, or we're comparing it to CPU uh, quotas. So already you might get a sense of why I wanted one query to rule them all because there's just a lot of queries out there. Um, I did put a link in here to Pretty Prom, so if you are a prom queen, there are slashes back there, but if you are particular about your prom query syntax and your tree views, um, there's a link to Pretty Prom and you can Pretty Prom all the queries that you want later. But if you notice, like there's just a lot happening in these queries and um, getting into cores or millicores and all that kind of stuff. So here are the internal chronosphere queries. Um, and if you notice here, we have multiple panels for CPU and multiple queries per panel. 
again, uh, this wasn't an easy question uh, to figure out what is the, the CPU query to rule them all. But um, again, you'll see we'll have rates use core usage per second. We'll have some percentages, again, comparing usage to resource requests or you know, uh, container resources. We have some OR statements in ours because of some um, dev autonomy UIs where we kind of auto detect some of your metrics. So we have to create queries that depend on what metrics we're pulling from. Uh, we can get the queries out of the box without you all figuring out what queries you need. And then lastly, here are some of the queries from the canonical dashboards. I'm sure if you're into, <laughs> or if you're using Node Exporter, Open Source, C Advisor, um, these should be familiar to you. What's funny is some of them, you load them and they're automatically over 100%. So uh, I haven't mentioned the filtering, but if you notice these queries, there's a lot of times we are kind of filtering to specific pod level, namespace, container. All of that is very necessary to make sure you're getting the right metrics. Um, there, yeah, and there's just more interesting queries, right? Here we're subtracting from 100, we're using node CPU seconds. Um, here we're doing per core, there we're doing per container. Um, anyway, here is what ended up being 13 prom queries for you um, to explore. Um, I did kind of break them up, right? It looked like there were a couple types of queries. Still not sure why pod count was in the mix, but that's kind of what you get when you're playing in customers' environments. You never know what's going to be in the closet. Uh, there was a lot of percentages, right? But then within the percentage, you had to figure out, is it per core, per quota, per container? What was the, the metric we were comparing to? Again, if you're just counting number of cores used, sometimes you had to convert to cores or understand it was millicores. And then again, you had all your rates and usage per seconds that you then needed to kind of filter down to the correct um, level. So this is where you get to participate. Um, if you wanna go to slido.com and enter that number, uh, you should be able to see if you have questions, you can type in questions, because I am collecting data, I am a data nerd or you can go to the poll and you can look at all these queries. I will say I also put all these queries up in the Percy's uh, open source, uh, play, it's just demo.percy's.dev. Um, you can scroll down and get all these queries in this visualization. <laughs> we helped develop the Percy's thing. This is kind of what our UI looks like. But yeah, you have all the queries here and if you click edit, you can go grab them and play with them. There's, it is a demo environment, so some of the data isn't populating, and you can see all the variables up here. So if you want those, you can go pull that, you can go pull that JSON and get the queries as well. And uh, I will also um, switch the poll to memory, because I did do this for memory as well. <laughs> so here are 10 memory uh, queries you can go uh, play with. And again, we're dealing with working memory, memory limits, container resource limits, um, RSS, here's all these mem total queries that you can use to kind of compute your memory usage. And then I actually, the one I like the most is number 10, um, just the working set memory um, over container resources. Um, yeah, and just an example, like here I tried to pull some data. If you're measuring high CPU usage, you might use max by uh, various filters. Um, or you might just want the sum and you get something like this, or you might get a percentage, and again, they kind of all look a little different, have a little bit, some of them are using the same metrics, but they're filtered differently, um, so it's kind of an interesting problem to explore. Um, I think that's it. Oh, is there a question? Yes. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Um, and, and I put my slides up here too, so if you guys wanna go and download the presentation, please tell me your thoughts on these queries. Which ones do you like? Which ones you don't like? Um, because yeah, I just keep finding CPU and memory queries in the wild. Um, I think I'm almost done. What was I gonna say? Yeah, if you have questions, email me. I'm gonna be hanging out at the booth in Chronosphere. We have a party Thursday. There's another QR code. Um, you can check out the Chronosphere blogs. And then, um, again, I put some more resources here as well. So if you want to go look at the node exporter and see the queries live um, or in the wild, 
um, there's the link to all the queries in the Percy's. And then um, there's this great Stack Overflow article that kind of began my headache is because it just lists a ton of queries and everybody's like, wait, which one am I supposed to use? And that's that. Oh, and yeah, so thanks so much.